Welcome back to the channel tubes. Today in the shop we have uh, our own personal new van for our family. 2014 Honda Odyssey. It's got a few issues we need to address. This sliding door right here, it's got the uh, old broken cable so it doesn't open. So today we're going to replace this cable with a micro fix kit I bought off eBay and we'll see how this goes. This repair may not be for everyone, may not be for me even, but I thought I'd give it a try. It's much cheaper than replacing the whole cable motor assembly from Honda. So let's get at it. This is the kit we bought. It's a uh, micro fix kit. Has replacement cables with the uh, uh, ball ends, I guess you'd call them. Looks like they're soldered on there. Already pre-attached, which is nice. It also comes with the metal ferrules that you need to install. It comes with two extra ferrules and a piece of wire so you can practice your uh, ferrule ends. Uh, I'm pretty new to using ferrules. I purchased this kit off Amazon. It's an electrical ferrule tool and I also have my, uh, I don't know what you call this, your electrical ferrule tool also, by connectors. So that's what we're going to be putting in today and hopefully it works. To do this procedure, we have to remove the whole back inside of the van. The whole panel has to come out. Um, we're going to be about 80% there to replacing the whole motor cable assembly. So if you did buy one from the dealer, this video should cover most of uh, what you need to do to replace the whole uh, motor cable assembly. First thing you want to do, make sure that your sliding doors are off. Even better yet, disconnect your negative battery terminal. First thing we gotta do, get your uh, car seat out of the way. Then we're gonna take the seat and I'm gonna move it all the way forward. Gives us enough room to access back here. You can take the seat right out if you like. My back doesn't feel like taking the seat out. Next step, we want to remove the uh, lower threshold here. Do that, just pull up in the front and it should pop right out. Pretty simple. Uh, please note, a lot of times the clips, they stay in the body there. You have to pull them up and put them back in the panel before you reassemble. Put that in there like so. Door seal. Have to pull the door seal off. Just around the lower panel. Allows us to move it out of the way. Now that's all that needs to be done here. Now to go to the back of the van. In the back of the van here, we got to remove this uh, lower threshold to get this panel out of the way. First thing we want to do is uh, get these seats pulled out of the way so we can get this uh, lower threshold out. Before we get this uh, lower threshold out of the way, there's two uh, garbage bag screws or bag retaining screws we have to remove on the lower portion here and here. There's also a third one that we have to remove up here on the uh, C-pillar trim or back trim before we can get it out. Go ahead and do that now. We're going to remove the uh, two 10 mm bolts here that are not supposed to be bolts at all. They're supposed to be bank hooks. Just kind of pull the panel out from the bottom and pull it up to remove it. The clips, this back panel, have little rubber gaskets that go on them, so uh, try not to lose those and put them back on. They came off. Now that our threshold's out of the way, we go ahead and fold the seats back down. We 
where the band come from over here. To do that, I have a set of pair of pliers. As you put a rag over it, then I grab it and just give it a twist. Once it's loose, you should have thread it with your hands. Now for the next step, we got to pull this back um, trunk seal off. You just got to pull it off the part where, where it contacts the panel. I'm going to pull it out a little bit more so it's out of my way. Now we're going to remove this panel from the vehicle. It's all held in by clips. I'm just going to pull it back. As I'm pulling back, I'm going to be sure to uh, hold on to the upper portion of the panel here so it doesn't come disconnected from the headliner. Now with the panel loose, disconnect any electrical connectors you have there. This is an EX model, so the only thing we have is the accessory socket back here. But if you have the uh, DVD model, you're going to have a connector back here with the 110 volt plug. And also your headphone jacks and all that stuff connected back here. So make sure you disconnect that too. Just going to fish the seat bolts away from the panel. We're going to pull it out from the car. For our next step, we're going to remove this trim piece right here on the vehicle. This is going to give us access to the center roller that's on the van, which supports the weight of the door. And also, that's where the cables hook up to pull it open and closed. There's three fasteners that hold this trim panel on. And the first one is right there. It's hard to see in the camera. Just take your Phillips and screw it out. We have two T40s back here. Those trim piece. Let's get that removed. Just drop the bolts in the ground. Both of them. Door is not shut all the way. Now with all those fasteners removed, I should be able to slide the panel backwards and remove it. Now for the next step, we're going to support the lower portion of the door with a floor jack. The center roller does support all the way to the door when it's in the open position. So if you take it off, the door will fall to the ground and it's very heavy and dangerous. Just lift it a bit so you see the weight come off the roller. This next part can be kind of tricky. The preferred method, I guess, to do this would be to remove the 12 mil bolts that hold the hinge to the door. If you're going to do that, make sure you draw a, a line all the way around where the hinge is because this is the adjustment of the door. If you don't get it right, it will not open and close properly. The method I prefer to use is to remove the C-clip on the top of the pin and I like to drive the pin out so I don't touch this adjustment at all. Then the, 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 this portion of the hinge and this plate will be separated which allow me access to the cables. To get the pin out of the hinge, there's a C-clip up here you need to remove. I just take my pick, I kind of grab it and give it a pull. Watch out, it might go flying on you, don't lose it. That's what we got right there. Put in a safe place. Now with the pin removed, I take a, uh, I'm not a punch, a chisel and I get up underneath the stop of the pin and I hammer on until it comes down.
hopefully you can see the lower pin is starting to come out now. Now I'm gonna grab it my uh, I'm gonna grab my vice grips. Put my vice grips on it. I'm just gonna tap on the vice grips. Voila. There's your hinge pin. Now you should be able to pull your door away from the cable side of the roller. This is what we're working with here. You can see with the nylon rollers, steel bearing roller in the middle. Uh, there's an updated part for this from Honda. It comes with steel on the top, it's a low friction one they call it. And here's the cables that have been cut. Just you can see, I can remove these cables. Just slide them, remove them. There is a uh, nylon bushing on both ends. We're going to reuse those on the new cables. So please do not discard those. We'll keep this roller for reinstallation. Here we are back inside the van. Here's the power sliding door motor. We're going to have to take the uh, one, two, three, four, five screws out and see what's going on in here. Looks like I might have to remove these 10 mils too. That hold the lower portion of the motor on. That is a mess. Wow. Is it salvageable? That's a uh, beautiful, eh? Please note how this all goes together. Might be a good idea to take a picture right now. I don't even know if this motor's any good. It is pretty ruined, but if we have to, I guess we'll have to buy a new one. I really don't want to, but let's continue. There's a cable ends coming out. Normally I don't think you want to take these out. I'm going to take these out just to clean them off. Remember what side they came off of? Wow. Now we're going to take the uh, spool off the electric motor. 10 mil. Oh, there's more goodies back here. In the instructions I have for the replacement cable, it tells you to make note on which way the cables went in before you take it apart. I don't have a lot to work with here. You can see here where one of the square ferrules fits in there. Goes around. That's a mess. I'm going to get some compressed air in here to clean this all up. Clean up my wheel and uh, we'll try to fish some new wire through. Watch your eyes everyone. Oh. 
old cable, new cable. Let's see what we got going on here. They advertise that this new cable is twice the tensile strength as the old stuff. Therefore, it should last a lot longer, I think. There we go. There should be two different lengths. And there is. There's the end of one cable where my thumb is. Here's a longer one. The longer cable goes towards the front. Right or left side is the same. Longer cable towards the front. Before we get too far, let's take the nylon sheathing off the old cable that was in the, the roller portion and install it on our new cable. In order to do that, I'm just going to cut the remainder cable off and slide it down. It's a little tricky. Put my screwdriver in there. Just giving it a pull. Well, that's what we look like there. Just gonna slide the end of the open cable through the sheathing, slide it all the way down onto our new cable. Make sure you do this to both. Voila. Now to route the cables through the old sheathing, I think it's going to be a lot easier if I take the cables and the old sheathing off the vehicle. At this point it's pretty simple. Uh, there's uh, three bolts right there. One's behind the loom, you can't, or wire harness, you can't see it. Just take those off and then they'll come free from the vehicle make it a lot easier for routing the cables. The ones in the front of the vehicle are a lot easier. Right here by the seat belt. I'm gonna pull the rear cable off here. It's the most rearward cable. This cover right here. It's just these uh, two rubber tabs that hold it in there. I'm just going to get a pull and remove that rubber. You can see there's a roller in there. I'm going to locate my shorter cable. I have my shorter cable, which uh, in the structure we call the opener cable. Now I'm just going to run the cable through here, I hope. Just give it a push. Not really going so well here. There she goes, going fishing through. There you go cables through. Now I'm just going to pull it all the way through. There. How many people are yelling at me right now? Make sure you put the rubber seal on first. Got the uh, old rubber seal here. Going to want to fish the new cable through the seal. Pull it down. Quite a ways. 
Get your old cable here. This is the roller. Might take some finesse. Just gonna try to get that cable to go through the sheeting. There she goes. Now your cable's through. Reinstall your rubber seal. Just give it a pull, and the rubber's in the back side there. Now we're going to work on the uh, front cable. I'm just going to pull straight out of these clips. Same procedure. I'm just going to give the little rubber a pull. This one's a bit easier. There's no tabs on it. It just sits on the outside. The front sheathing. We're going to take it won't fit through here very well. We're going to take it apart. You can see there's tabs here and here. We're just going to give them a squeeze. They just popped out. Same on the bottom. Now the cover is completely removed off this. Now with that removed, you can remove the cable. Remember where it went. The front cable is going to be some difficulty getting it through. It's supposed to slide through and around. It's catching on some of the ribbing inside here. So it's really hard to see, but I'm going to try grabbing the cable and pulling it down, and hopefully it comes through. I've been struggling with this thing for 15 minutes. pin comes right out of the roller. Be careful not to lose it. Now with that removed, roller comes out. Cable goes in. Roller goes back. Slide pin back in. There. I struggled this for uh, way longer than I should have. Now we got our cable through our roller. We'll put our sheathing back on. Keep fishing it through. Put your sheathing back in place. Now grab the retainer and clip it back in. Please very, pay very close attention to how this came apart. It can be kind of tricky to do. And one last thing, there should be a seal on the end of here. Put the seal back on. And the seal is directional, it only goes on one way. One of the retainers is longer than the other. There we go, ready to go back in the car. Now that we have our cables through our sheathing, we can go ahead and put it back in the car. Gonna start with the front cable. I'm going to pull it through the holders here. Fish the cable to the outside of the car. Put the mount back up. Three 10 mil bolts. Now the rear sheathing. Going to fish the ends of the opening. Back here. Of 
going to install the three washer nuts. Now we're back here at the motor. Going to reinsert the cable, the motor housing. Now that we have our cables routed through the sheeting back to the motor, you can route the cables back here. We're going to install our center roller again. It's pretty straightforward. Put your cables in. Put your roller back in position. We're going to slide our center pin back in, our hinge pin. It's going to tap it up all the way from the bottom. Going to install a C-clip. I like to rest the C-clip on the top of the hinge. So just use a punch or a screwdriver and just kind of tap it into place. Remove our floor jack. Before you proceed, ensure that your cable is properly rooted to the center of the channel. You want to put the cable in the sheathing there. Now back to the inside. Now we're going to put the cable through the guides. Cable housing back in. Then reinsert that cable guide. You can do the same for this side. I believe that's how it's supposed to go. Now we can put the ferrule ends on these new cables <laughs> and wind them up. Can I start with the front cable? These are the provided ferrules. I have a square ferrule tool. Slide the ferrule onto the wire just so it's flush. Give her a squeeze. Double check to see if my ferrule fits into the roller assembly. which does perfectly. Next ferrule. Before I wind the cables onto the inner spindle of the motor, I'm going to move the door to the midpoint position so I have equal lengths of cable on either side before I wind it up. We have our cables the same length. The door is in the mid position. It takes some finesse to get it there. Trial and error. The spool on the motor itself here. You only show it 
figure which way it goes on. It only goes on one way. Now we gotta try to wind this cable up. It's gonna be difficult. The cable is coming from the back of the vehicle. Goes on the front face of the pulley. Fish it in there. And the cable that goes to the, to the front of the vehicle goes on the back side of the face. This is super tricky. Slide this pulley up.
part. That was going on here. Ooh. Do you think I have it, tubes? That is a pain in the butt to get together. Just gonna lightly snug this up and give the door a pull. Let's uh, move the door. Actually, no, never mind. Probably get that in the right spot first. Sheathing in there. This has popped out. There. Think it'll work? Just gonna lightly pull the cover on there, and then I'm gonna operate the door manually. I just don't want those tensioners to pop out. Okay, so I've mainly opened and closed the door manually. I took the cover back off. Uh, my cables appear to be in place. They haven't fallen off the rollers here. So now I'm gonna permanently install the cover. Okay, the power sliding door is working. At first it wasn't working, it wasn't closing all the way. I thought there was a, uh, an obstruction in the door. Um, I've had to relearn the, re sorry, I've had to rehome the doors. Now our sliding door is fixed, we can reassemble. First thing we're going to do is put that back panel in there. Gonna put our threshold back in. Don't forget to put your uh, bag ties or whatever you want to call them in there. I want to put my incorrect bolts back in there that came with. Now we're gonna put the door seal back on. Gonna put our door seal around the door. Now we're gonna put our threshold in. There's a net, this end right here. Slides down into there. 
and you clip it down. Now I'm just gonna pop the door open a little bit, it shut off. The side trim panel here is held in by the clips. Just turn the clips sideways. Now come out. Maybe you have one like me here where somebody's epoxied it in because the clip was broken. Guess we'll just skip that one. Okay, take our sliding door track cover and uh, put the clips back in it. Don't forget to put your uh, Phillips screw back in the side here if you still have it on your van. T40s, last two.